My name is Tino and today I'm going to talk about microproducing as a strategy for sustainable food production. Uh, today we live in a consumer society. It is, uh, it is a fact. Um, this uh, phenomenon started in the beginning of the 20th century and is pushing the civilization to pr consume and produce more and more, far more than it is necessary for its survival. So the question remains, what has the 21st, so, uh, 21st century have in store for us? Um, today, you know, we live, we live in the past. The future is always ahead, everything is changing, so those who can predict what will happen tomorrow will have a jump start on the rest of the world. So we today think about what the food of tomorrow will look like. Uh, food production is an enormous undertaking. Um, the pressure on food production uh, and distribution is, is n has never been greater. Uh, that has pushed us to uh, grow this food production far beyond consumer demand. Far more than the, the amount of food we actually need. So we have to stock the supermarkets, we have to st stock the shops, the farmer markets, and everything has to be in beautiful abundance. That has led us to a problem. One third of all the food we produce, we have to waste. Um, this, is unstant this is the unsustainable part. The more we need, the more we throw away. Sustainability is very much at odds with the whole concept of overproduction and wasting. That is not sustainable. Uh, we live in a world of finite resources, and if we waste them, we will not have enough, especially that our numbers are increasing and our demand is increasing. Uh, we have somewhere along the line decided even to uh, cross some boundaries um, and uh, disregard our environment. We have created some, some terrible, terrible uh, scenes by uh, overproducing, packaging, uh, processing, food. Lowering production will not be the answer, because we need the food. We need to feed more people every day. And how, one way to do this without the negative effects is um, give people more information about food. Make the consumer understand its food much better. We lack basic understanding of the food. Um, the consumer does not think about where the food comes from or how it is produced, how it is created, how it is transported, packaged, or processed. It, the consumer basically sees the end product without it, all its history. So, what we can do, and we, what we must do, I believe, is feed this information to the consumer, educate the consumer, uh, give him an opportunity to see what the food history looks like, what it is, where it comes from, what are the uh, fascinating uh, facts of uh, food production, and what are the risks, and what are the hazards, and, and how maybe even one day the consumer can um, affect the food production. Line of sight is, is the best way. People relate to things they see. People take care about things they own. And the way of putting this problem in their ownership will basically make them care. And once they care, they will acquire the knowledge to solve the problem. And with knowledge, uh, there is nothing uh, in our way to change the world in a way that we need to. We are in the business of vegetable gardens. And vegetable gardens are very relatable. People have them in their backyards or actually had them in their backyards. They don't, do, they don't have them anymore, but they know the concept. And everybody thinks that there is very little that can be added to this, uh, to this, uh, uh, to this concept. But uh, even a small change can create a world of difference. And this is what we did. We took the vegetable garden from potentially our grandmother's backyard and we put it in, into people's phones. So um, it is handy. You have it 
by your side all the time, you think about it all the time, you never lose sight of it actually. If you lose sight of it for a minute, you, you are in, in panic. So we believe that uh, bringing uh, these complex issues to the consumers uh, can only be done through a channel uh, they trust most and use most, and that is their phone or their device. We have created a garden that is actually just a garden. It's a garden uh, and gr vegetables grow, in it, grow on it. Uh, but the other side of the garden is the digital version of itself. Somewhat a dual personality. You look at it from the user's side, it's digital. You look at it from the farmer's side, it's physical. And this actually kind of intrigues, intrigues the, the customer because it, the customer li loves digital. Everything is digital. And if it, if it has a physical aspect to it, it's even better. So, how does it work? Um, the customer, or the user, or the vegetable garden owner, however we might call him or her, rents a garden online, chooses the vegetables uh, they want to uh, plant, and they click the vegetables they plant, different vegetables they want to do, and then their phone tells them the story about uh, the, 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 the planting of the vegetable, the fertilizer, the, how it is protected uh, from, from the different uh, dangers uh, during the uh, vegetation. And it streams a lot of educational content, all while watching their own garden. They are soaking up this information, this educational content that makes them aware of not only the processes that are involved, but also the value they are creating. Because remember, it's their own. So, in the end, when the product is there, there is an obvious satisfaction by the customer that they have created something, albeit just only by their phone, but uh, nevertheless, it's a creation of theirs. And then they can opt um, to uh, deliver, their, um, deliver their vegetables to their doors or visit the garden, which we will come back to later. How does it work is that these gardens actually exist in, gar in a garden center where many, many, many hundreds and thousands of gardens can be uh, tended to at the same time by a professional crew. But being that everything is beautifully structured, uh, it demands much less work per garden than it would behind grandma's uh, house. Today, transparency is, is really key. And with the uh, word organic being um, trending more than ever and being meaningful, meaningful more than ever, um, consumers want to, be, want to be sure because they will see um, something on a shelf and uh, it will be organic or maybe it will not be, maybe it just says so. They need to put in a certain amount of trust in, in this product that it is actually what they think it is, what it says it is. By, by having their phone as a constant window into this garden of theirs, streaming everything that happens on this garden, in this garden, they actually don't need to trust anybody because they will see everything that happens. They will see every, uh, every uh, fertilizer or every process, every action that uh, is happening, they will see it maybe in real time, but definitely in their own garden. So they need to, don't need to trust anybody. They are certain. Um, as I mentioned earlier, even one step further, the digital garden becomes physical when the user uh, decides to go to the garden. The garden center is supposed to be close to a city. The first one already is. And it enables the, the user, the owner of the garden, the customer, to just sit in their car and go there and actually see what it looks, feels like, actually harvest their own vegetables, and maybe even bring their children to experience picking their own vegetables, which a supermarket does not offer, and probably never will. Uh, there is a harvesting calendar that will tell people when they have enough of vegetables, uh, in which months, what to expect, how much, roughly, of course. Um, and the, 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 
the point is also that uh, customers can pick how much they need beforehand. So um, an average size family will pick a 40 to 50 square meter garden, say, okay, this is, we, we check the, uh, the yields that we can expect, and they say, okay, this is enough for us. This is enough for us, and we'll probably not waste uh, vegetables. It will be sufficient for our family needs. And if something is maybe sur uh, a surplus, we'll just let the guys at the, at the, at the um, garden center know that we will not be picking up our cucumbers, and we want them pickled or we'd like them uh, frozen, or we'd like them processed in a way that we can use them later in the winter, so nothing is wasted. A small garden gives you just enough uh, vegetables, enough produce that you need, and even if there's some surplus, you can process it and save it for when the vegetation season ends. Sustainability, again, is absolutely the key. Um, what is making it sust sustainable first uh, organic production sustains the environment. So today it is trendy, tomorrow it will probably be ubiquitous. Uh, sustaining the environment will be more and more important. So we're sustaining the environment and we are uh, very effectively using labor to uh, perform activities that one customer alone would never be ready to, to, to sacrifice the time and the effort and maybe a know-how that he or she maybe cannot even acquire. So this makes it very, very sustainable. Organics, like I said, today a trend, today maybe a, a privilege, tomorrow it will be necessity, and hopefully one day we will call it uh, mainstream or conventional. But um, it is really, really up to us to choose the path of sustainability and organic production as a personal responsibility for the generations to come. Um, we do not know if the micro-production approach is the ultimate strategy of sustainable food production. There are many theories and different, um, different experts are, are pursuing different strategies. We are all in on this one, so we are going to try and make it happen this way, one garden at a time. What we hope to achieve is change the idea of food. We want to produce only what we need because this will bring us to having more. Um, we want to educate people because when they know they can do better. And we would also like the people to experience the joy of creating something and then not having to think about who did what and how it was made or, or if it is exactly what it's promising to be. So we hope that um, this micro-producing aspect will provide uh, food for generations to come. Thank you very much.